Welcome to worship here uh, at Strathalbyn. Today, of course, we celebrate Harvest Thanksgiving. That's why we have some of our uh, produce uh, here at the front of the church to offer to God. And I believe, as per usual, I think we might be passing that on to Pantry Club, if uh, memory serves me correctly. Also, just to draw your attention, uh, during Holy Communion today, uh, um, Andrew will be singing a song that he wrote that's, uh, by, uh, that links nicely to our gospel reading. And then after that, we'll be having um, the next song of the month called uh, Yet Not I, But Christ in Me. So stay tuned for that as you come to the Lord's table this morning. Let's share now the opening words together. God gives the grass for the cattle and plants for people to use. He brings forth food from the earth and gives wine to gladden the human heart, oil to make the face shine and bread to strengthen us. So friends, we come to worship our God who provides for us. We come to give him our thanks and praise. So we begin our time of worship, our time of thanksgiving in, in God's name, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Commands of the hosts of heaven, who was to make every king bow down, who was to whisper and darkness trembles, oh. only a holy God. What are the beauty to my such praises, what a splendor outshines the sun, what a the majesty rules with justice, only a holy Only a holy God. Only 
seated. Friends, despite God's abundant grace and mercy, we are guilty of failing to give the first fruits of our harvest to him. Selfishness and greed and pride stain our offerings. So let us draw near now to our holy God, to God our loving Father, with a sincere heart and ask him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Heavenly Father, we confess our sin in the misuse of your creation. We are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. Be merciful to us and forgive us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but acknowledge that we sometimes forget that you are the one who has given them to us. Be merciful to us and forgive us. <clears throat> Father, we belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but we often ignore the cry of the hungry, the poor and the needy. Be merciful to us and forgive us. <clears throat> we store up many treasures for ourselves, but are often reluctant to share your blessings with those around us. Even though, even our family and friends, be merciful to us and forgive us. Friends, hear once again the good news. Jesus, the one and only mediator between us and God, has given himself as a ransom for our sin and for our lack of gratitude. So on behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ and by his command, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God's peace be with each of you. Amen. We have an opportunity now to stand and share the peace of Christ with each other. We are a slightly larger number today by the looks of it, so I encourage you to maintain uh, COVID safe practices. Um, a reminder, we, you can try this sign language, God's peace to you. You might like to do an elbow bump or peace sign to the person near you. So yeah, let's stand and as we're able, we'll share the peace of Christ with each other.
And friends, the Lord be with you. Uh, let us pray and thank God for all his grace and goodness. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we praise you for your goodness and thank you that you have protected our crop and gardens and given us a harvest. May we enjoy what our labour has produced in health and peace, never forgetting to honour you by praising you for all your gifts to us and by sharing them with those in need. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated uh, as we hear God's word to us for this morning. The first reading for Harvest Thanksgiving is written in the second chapter of the book of the prophet Joel, beginning at the 21st verse. Do not fear, O soil. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and vine give their full yield. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain, as before. The threshing floor shall be full of grain, the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army, which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I forgot to mention that we're actually listening to a psalm in between the first two readings. Sorry about that, Heather. That's all right. um, it's a beautiful version of Psalm 126 uh, by a group called Sojourn Music. And uh, this uh, fits nicely with the theme of uh, giving our harvest thanks to God. So let's have a listen. So 
The second reading is written in the second chapter of Paul's first letter to Timothy, beginning at the first verse. My dearly beloved, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel reading for this uh, for Harvest Thanksgiving Sunday is uh, written in Matthew chapter 6, reading from verse 25. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your, lot, to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even King Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need them, that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. And are there any children here this morning who want to come forward? Lexi, fantastic. Not sure if there's anyone else. Oh, yeah, and Elodie too. You'll be happy that you've come forward, I promise. Because I've got something in this box. <clears throat> How about we sit, I might sit up here amongst the uh, bright colours of the harvest. <laughs> Thanks, offerings. Good to see you, Lexi. Good to see you, Elodie. Keep them well. Yeah. Had a good weekend, good break from school. Yeah, definitely, I can imagine. Now, um, I have a question for you this morning. What does it mean to worry about someone or worry about something? What does it mean to worry? Absolutely. So Elodie said if you see someone who's upset, someone who's struggling, you, you, you want to care for them and reach out to them. What about when you worry about something you don't have or worry about something going wrong in your life? Is that a different type of worry to being concerned for someone's needs? Yeah. So I want to talk about that type of worry when we stress or when we're afraid of things uh, uh, not going right or not having something. So I'm hoping that you might be feeling brave this morning. Uh, I've got three questions about worry that I want to ask you, but given that we're in front of everybody, uh, you don't have to say yes or no or raise your hands. You can simply, if the answer is yes, you can reach and grab a lollipop and just quickly place it you know, there where no one can see. But if it's not, don't worry about grabbing a lollipop. You can just leave them in there. We won't run out. There's about 30-odd. I'm really overstocked, just in case. 
So here we go. And the mums and dads might like to answer these questions too, but you don't get a lollipop, sorry, because you're all the way back there. <laughs> that was a bit nasty, wasn't it? Uh, so first question, do you ever worry about having enough time to finish your homework? I did, so I'm going to take... Well, whoops, I'm supposed to just take a lollipop without saying anything. I worry sometimes about not having enough time to finish my sermon for a Sunday. Do you ever worry about what somebody else thinks about you? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and do you ever worry about whether or not God still loves you when you know you've done the wrong thing? There we go. Thank you for answering those questions. We won't tell everyone how many lollipops you have, but if you don't have three, you can uh, grab a couple more um, at the end and take three back to your seat. You might want to share them with mum or dad. You might want to stash them away for yourself. There we go. So uh, in the reading that I read from Matthew 6, Jesus talks about uh, worry, or worry. He says, don't worry about having enough food to eat or enough trendy clothes to wear or warm clothes to wear because I will look after you. I love you and I don't want you to be in need. In fact, Jesus says, um, look at the birds in the air and the flowers of the field. Um, got some flowers up there. I haven't got any birds of the air in here, but that's okay. Uh, Jesus says, look at those and look how the, at how the birds are never, are never short of food and how the flowers look so beautiful. If God, your heavenly Father, cares so much for the birds and the flowers, how much more uh, does he love you? And how much more will he make sure that you have everything you need each day? So as hard as it might be, Jesus uh, encourages us that we don't need to worry about what others think of us or how we're going to get through each day. Because God loves us more than we could ever imagine and he will always uh, take care of us. And God often reminds us of this, maybe through lollipops, they might make us happy, but uh, through, through our friends, what was that? That's all right, that's good then, that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, he might also care for us and show his love for us through our friends, our family, uh, our church family, who we gather with on a Sunday and through the week. And uh, birds and flowers and our friends and families aren't the only things, the only ones that remind us of God's love and goodness, where do you think we see God's love and care for us the most? When we pray to him, absolutely. When we uh, look at the cross of Jesus and cry out to God for help. We see God's uh, fatherly care for us, his crazy love for us, most clearly in Jesus, who, uh, as you know, died for our sins and then rose again to give us life forever with God. So as we look at the cross, as we pray, as we read uh, our Bibles, we can know for sure, God reminds us for sure, that in Jesus we have nothing uh, to worry about. Now today we're celebrating Harvest Thanksgiving. Do you know what that is? Happy. Yep, absolutely. Is that at Christmas time? That wasn't Operation Christmas Child, was it? Maybe? Yeah, that's another uh, time that we can do that as well. So both Elodie and Lexi said, Harvest Thanks is a time where we bring our offerings to God and uh, we, we donate these, the, our produce, um, the grocery items that we bring uh, to those who are in need. And we actually give our, our Harvest Thanks uh, offering to Pantry Club. Do you guys know Pantry Club and what they do in the community here? Uh, it's run through the local Christian churches here in Strath and also in Callington and uh, um, people come, those who maybe don't have quite enough money to buy food each week can come along and receive some food uh, uh, for a small fee. And the bonus is they get to have, well, pre-COVID times, they got to have a cup of tea or coffee and some bickies uh, with those who are serving them the food and have a time for conversation and prayer if they want it as well. So. Harvest thanks is when we come and bring our, our offerings to give to Pantry Club, but also it's a time when we can come and just thank God uh, for his love for us and all the good things that he's given us uh, um, that we then pass on to other people. 
So when we give thanks to God, it helps us uh, to worry a little bit less. So how about we pray now uh, and thank God, uh, which will help us with those things that we worry about. So let's pray. Father God, you are so loving and so good to us all the time. Help us with the things we're worried about and remind us that you love us no matter what others might think of us. Thank you for our family, our friends, the chance to go to school and learn, our church family, for birds and flowers, food and clothes and shelter, and for who you are and for who you've made us to be. Thank you, Je oh, thank you for lollipops too. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thanks, Lily. Thanks, Lexi. If you want to grab another a couple of lollipops to make sure you've got three. If you grab an extra one, more than three, I won't notice either, so that's all right. You're too honest and trustworthy. <laughs> Excellent. I invite you to stand now as we sing our next song.
Friends, my message for this morning is based uh, on the gospel reading from Matthew chapter 6, where, as I mentioned in the kids' message, God, uh, Jesus, encourages us not to worry, but instead to trust that our Heavenly Father indeed loves us and cares for us uh, more than we could ever imagine. Let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for who you are, for your great unfailing love for us, and for all the many blessings that you shower upon us. Thank you for this time that we have now to dwell in your word. Amen. It's fair to say that uh, my daughter Isla uh, loves to look at and smell the roses that we um, have in the front yard uh, of the Mets. Unfortunately, one time when she was doing that, she was standing on the retaining wall uh, between the, uh, the lawn and the rose bushes, uh, and uh, she leant over just a little bit too far and fell in uh, amongst the thorns. So she ended up giving the roses a bit of a cuddle instead. Uh, thankfully, there was no, uh, no, no, uh, no uh, thorn-inflicted scratches or bruises. She was okay. Despite this minor incident, she hasn't been deterred. She still goes over to the rose bushes quite often and likes to smell them and look at them and uh, sit there with me and study the bugs that inhabit the petals. The yellow ones are her favourite uh, because yellow is her favourite colour. Thank you, Emma Wiggle. And also because they smell, <laughs> it's true, and also because they smell more fragrant than uh, the red ones. Bonnie and I, uh, of course, also enjoy smelling the roses, going out there and having a look at the roses, but we don't enjoy it anywhere near as much as Isla does. Stopping and smelling the roses. Taking a moment to stop and focus on all the wonderful blessings we have in our lives is something that I think we do best uh, as small children. In the infancy of our uh, lives on earth, we hardly have a care in the world. Our mum and dad uh, tend to take care of everything for us so we can just relax and enjoy life as it comes. But as we uh, begin to grow older, uh, we tend to start hurrying past the roses. And we even get to the point where we uh, start to forget that the roses are even there. And it's probably not really until we reach the twilight of our lives that we once again breathe deeply and fully appreciate the wonderf many wonderful aromas which God has infused into our lives. I would hazard a guess that perhaps uh, most of you have mastered the fine art of rose smelling uh, a little bit more than I have. In Matthew chapter 6, in our gospel reading for this morning, Jesus reminds us uh, of the benefits that our soul re souls receive uh, when we stop and smell the roses. That is, he uh, encourages us to regularly pause and appreciate God's abundant goodness in our lives and the many wonderful blessings he has bestowed upon us, uh, both physical and spiritual. And Jesus encourages us to do so as an antidote to worry. Because Jesus knows us very well. He knows that we all have stresses and worries in our lives. Uh, it's different things that we're concerned about, such as the well-being of our children and grandchildren whether or not a physical ailment will hinder us and stop us and, and maybe sap our joy, or whether we have said something that may have offended another person. We all have worries and concerns in our lives. However, Jesus isn't rebuking us uh, for having these kinds of legitimate and uh, loving concerns. But rather, he's trying to uh, highlight a subtle flaw that exists within our old self. He's reminding us here to be wary of our tendency to worry to the point of doubting God's love and goodness, his ongoing care for us, and his uh, abundant provision of all our needs. Jesus is warning us against becoming so consumed with stress and fear 
that we begin to doubt the truth that God is with us now, uh, with us and for us both now and always, and turn to and, and turn to other things instead to help us cope. A little bit earlier in Matthew chapter six, there's a bit of context that helps us understand what Jesus is saying to us this morning. Jesus, uh, a few verses earlier, addresses the temptation to seek wealth and worldly possessions, uh, a temptation that is apparent in every age, as a way of achieving a worry-free existence. That certainly is the message of the world we live in today. Now for us, it may not be the pursuit of wealth, but there are other uh, coping strategies that we turn to uh, for worry uh, that we adopt, which, uh, which do not honour God, such as a sin habit, or maybe taking our frustration out on other people. In our text for this morning, Jesus calls us away from these destructive models of coping and back towards the loving embrace of our Heavenly Father. Jesus points us to the provision of food for the birds of the air and God's majestic clothing of the flowers of the field. He highlights these particular roses as proof that God, our Heavenly Father, will indeed love us and provide for his people without fail. As Jesus puts it, if God cares this much about the birds and the flowers that he created, how much more does he care about the people whom he sent Jesus to die uh, to die for and rise again. How much more does he care uh, for you and for me? The fact that these are flowers of the field which so easily perish are more magnificent than, King, than when King Solomon was dressed in his finest robes speaks volumes to us. As much as we might try to clothe, our, uh, clothe ourselves to, dress, to address our worries, we cannot do a better job than God. That is, the band-aid solutions that we sometimes employ to deal with our worries are inferior to God's eternal promise of his ongoing care and provision. Friends, God's fatherly care is indeed seen in the ongoing life and fruitfulness of all creation, in the, but, it, but, it is also, but it is magnified the most in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. Through the cross, God the Father declared to the world, you don't need to worry about your sin or anything else anymore, for my son has paid the price for you. Even though you often doubt my goodness and worry if my love for you will be exhausted, the cross is proof that your worries are unfounded. In setting us free from our worries, Jesus has not only reconnected us to the love and care of our Heavenly Father, but he has also uh, enabled us to uh, do as he says in this passage, to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and trust that as we do, God will indeed meet all our needs. Our God, uh, just on a Personal example, God spoke this truth from Matthew 6.33 to me uh, quite clearly about uh, oh, almost seven years ago now, uh, before I made the decision to become um, uh, an LCA pastor. I initially resisted God's call to go to study at Australian Lutheran College, which is a common, common story for a lot of pastors. Uh, but I resisted because I was worried about not having enough money to uh, buy an engagement ring for Bonnie and also about having the finances to provide for her uh, as her future husband. So I kept saying to God, eh, I don't think you've got this right, God. Uh, but he kept working on my heart. And in what remains the, the, uh, the clearest time I've ever heard God's voice, he reassured me that he would provide for me, for Bonnie, for our family uh, in abundance if I trusted in him and uh, followed the path of love of love and service which he had mapped out for me. And God, uh, as you can imagine, has indeed kept his promise. Uh, I occasionally find myself pausing and, and smelling just how sweet the roses have been as I've have been as, a, as I've followed God, uh, God's call 
all the way to Strathalbyn. Friends, through this text, God or Jesus calls us to stop and smell the roses so that we can receive God's forgiveness and empowerment through his spirit to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. So I encourage you to pause now and breathe in deeply the aromas of God's love and blessings. As you do, let me ask you a few questions and lead you in uh, uh, to prayers. Firstly, what worries are you currently carrying? What worries have you come to church with this morning? Perhaps there's even some worries at the back of your mind that you're not even aware of that God might bring to your attention. Perhaps you're worried, as I mentioned earlier, about a health struggle or maybe the spiritual well-being of your children. Or maybe you're concerned about the future of our church. Whatever cares may be weighing you down, I invite you to give them to God, to lay them at the foot of the cross, uh, as I say the following prayer. And you might like to even hand your, uh, hold, imagine that you're holding your worries in your hands and hold them out in front of you um, as we pray and then let them go as we say, Amen. Heavenly Father, you love us and know us intimately. You know all the worries that weigh heavy on our hearts. Rather than letting these concerns fester and allowing room for temptation to grip us and doubt your goodness, we lay them all at the foot of the cross for you to deal with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And secondly, as we celebrate Harvest Thanksgiving this morning, what is God's Spirit leading you to be thankful for? It's such an easy thing to say thank you, to show gratitude, but it's not something that we naturally do all that well. It's not something that we do intentionally at times either. So I invite you now to take a moment uh, to uh, express your specific thanks to God for his fatherly care and the gracious blessings which he has given you uh, as we pray. Father God, you are the giver of all good things. There is nothing that we lack. Thank you for food and clothes, our houses and possessions, our family, our friends and our church family, our jobs and our study, the harvest you've blessed us with, and the people you've created and called us to be. We trust that as we rely on Jesus and seek to follow him, you will indeed provide for us abundantly, as you always have and always will. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So friends, let us continue to smell the roses. Let us continue to regularly pause and remember God's unfailing love and goodness, which is displayed most vividly in the cross of Jesus. And let us do that not just today as we celebrate Harvest Thanks, but each and every day, even if it's only for a moment or two in the morning or at night. And as we go about each day enjoying God's creation, let us Listen to Jesus' words. Let us not worry because worrying cannot add a single hour to our lives. And the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus our Lord. Who assures us that as those who are dearly loved by the Father, we need not worry. Amen. I invite you to stand now as we confess our faith in our gracious God who blesses us abundantly uh, through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we uh, continue to sing our thanks to God uh, through the offering hymn. Uh, as per usual in these COVID times, uh, your free will offering to God's work will be collected as you, in, in the bowl as you leave church this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for all the good things you continue to provide for us. Don't let us take your gifts for granted or abuse them. Instead, help us always to rely on you in faith. Use us and what you have given us for your good purposes. Amen. Friends, as we've heard this morning, as we've been reminded of this morning, our Heavenly Father loves, loves us and knows all our needs. So in our time of prayer now, let us confidently cast all our prayers on Him. Merciful Father, we thank you for providing everything we need for daily life and blessing us abundantly more than we deserve. Thank you also for our family and friends, our church family, for who you are and for who you've created us to be. We lay all our worries and concerns at the foot of the cross and ask that you would strengthen our faith in Jesus and sustain us through the challenges that each day brings. Lord, you have protected the fruits of the earth and crowned the year with your blessing. We give you thanks for physical health, for the use of our senses and for our intellect and thought. Make each of us good stewards of our abilities 
that we may bring glory to your name every day. Set us free from faithless worrying, so that we may love and serve others for Jesus' sake. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for supplying us with water. Help us to care for and manage our water resources wisely. Have mercy on those who are suffering drought and supply clean water to all who need it. And we give you thanks, gracious Father, for all the good things the earth produces. By your provision we are clothed and fed and lack no good thing. Care for those who live in want and teach us to be generous with the gifts you have first given us. May all those who receive the fruits of our harvest as well as Christian care and conversation at Pantry Club truly experience and recognise your love and goodness. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you for the financial gifts you have blessed us with. Teach us to use these gifts in ways that are pleasing to you. Warn and correct us when we falsely put our hope in worldly wealth and possessions. And grant our church the necessary funds to carry out its work of ministry and mission. And prompt each of us to give cheerfully and generously to the work you're doing in and through your church. And Lord, we ask for your blessing on today's Struth Gathering. Thank you for the Christian fellowship and time in your word that all who attend will enjoy. Fill the youth leaders with your spirit as they love and serve the young people of our town. And lead the young people to cast all their cares on you as you immerse them in your love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we ask for your blessing on the Callington AGM. Guide their discussions, Holy Spirit, as the Callington members gather to address the business that is before them. Grant them all a willingness to listen to each other and help them to grow together as your people. Lord, comfort and heal those who are finding it difficult to identify things to be thankful for because of sickness, depression or loneliness. And help all those we know who currently need your special care, including Joe Goy, Jan Harrison, Kerry Primero, Kevin Yench, Thelma and Bevan Newman, Ray Johnson, Gwen and Rex Lange, John and Mavis Angel, Neville Donhart, Myra Hindges, and Dawn Rudiger, as well as those whom we now name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, unless you care for us and give us what we need, all our work is in vain. Keep our hearts and minds set firmly on your word, so that we may always trust in you and be generous with the gifts you have given us. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand. Friends, the Lord be with you. Amen. 
with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Yes, it is indeed right and good, Lord God, Holy Father, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. You have sent your only Son to appear among us as a human being, and through him you have fully revealed the light of your presence to us. And so with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we adore and praise your glorious name. God, Holy Father, together with your only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, who unites your people in love. We thank you for creating all things. We praise you for calling and rescuing your chosen people. And above all, we thank and praise you for keeping your promise to the people of old and sending your Son, Jesus Christ, whose life, death, and resurrection for our salvation we remember as he comes to us in this holy mill. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Lord, send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen our faith so that we who receive the body and blood of Christ may live as true members of the body of your Son. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. And Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
sanitised your hands. You can't do that while I... Friends, as you come to the Lord's table this morning, I encourage you to stop and smell the roses to uh, uh, remember God's love and goodness for you. And as you uh, smell and taste the bread and wine, may you know that God loves and cares for you deeply. Come, for all things are now ready. Jesus 
Jealous and strong, pursuing and claiming me, seen in the sun, in Jesus who rescued me. This is love. There is a love that speaks of amazing grace, stooping to serve and taking the sinner's place. Humble in death and suffering my disgrace. This is love. Oh, your love is better than life to me. Heaven's highest treasure, wonderful and free. Binding me to you for eternity. Your I invite you to stand. The body and blood of your Saviour Jesus strengthen you and keep you in true faith to life eternal. Go in peace. 
to love and serve the Lord with joy. Amen. Let us pray and thank God for this holy meal of life. Heavenly Father, you raised your Son to be the first fruits of the resurrection from the dead. As we have received the body and blood of our risen Lord, gather us into your kingdom at the final harvest. Pass this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you his peace. Amen. Let's remain, uh, actually, yeah, let's remain standing as we sing our closing hymn. Folks, welcome to worship. Uh, welcome to a couple of visitors with us this morning. Um, you're almost uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, join us for uh, uh, tea or coffee after service this morning in the Rosa Hall room behind us. A couple of people would like to speak to you uh, just briefly this morning. So perhaps uh, Annabelle, I'll call you up first. Oh, I had an email from Patrick and Anka just recently, and uh, so I thought I'd just share a couple of points with you. He's still the only doctor there in Akarumpa in New Guinea, and um, so he's been very, very busy. Um, he's hoping to get two long-term long doctors um, returning uh, from the US uh, in the next couple of weeks, so we hope that will go ahead. He did his first uh, medivac to Cairns by taking um, or accompanying a 30-year long-term missionary who's been doing translation work 
um, to Cairns because he had a massive stroke. So that was a first for him and he was able to touch Australian soil briefly. Uh, he's also been advised that his Australian citizenship is all finalised now. It's taken a long, long time. And he hopes to have a remote online citizenship ceremony soon. The children are all well and they ride their bikes a lot and they all are missing Australia. There'll be a newsletter shortly, hopefully at the end of this month or early next month. Thank you, uh, Hannibal, for that. Um, just on that note, um, I'll forewarn you now, one of the emotions that'll be coming forward at, the, uh, at our AGM in about a month's time, whenever that is, six weeks or whatever it is, uh, I'm pretty sure is uh, uh, to uh, donate some funds to um, Patrick and Anka for their work in New Guinea. I think that's right, isn't it, Dennis? Oh, good. <laughs> Survived another one. Um, Bryce <laughs> would like to say, say a few things to us. Um, I'm not sure how official or formal it is, um, but I uh, have the privilege of looking after or endeavouring to uh, uh, serve the congregation as a Bible study coordinator. Um, and, and I think, I, is, that ever, is that formal or has that been formally sanctioned or decided on? Yes. Yes, good, okay, a circular argument. So um, my, uh, I just want to sort of explain a little bit of where I see myself at to encourage the reading and study and, and memorizing of the scriptures. Um, I don't know whether you, if you think about it, if, if I think pretty well every one of us here could actually memorize one Bible verse a week. Um, Eric, you're the mathematician. How many would that give us in a year? One a week, how many would that give us in a year? too hard for him? Can anybody answer? So um, on my calculation, even if you had a week off for Christmas, that would give us over 40. So um, just think about that. Um, one a week is not a too big a deal, I wouldn't have thought. But anyway, that's just as a carrot to hang before uh, some ponies. Um, the other uh, point is uh, to support Pastor Matt and the group leaders. So I'm not here, uh, I'm not endeavouring to fulfil my role as a group leader by any means, but to support those who are group leaders. Um, and uh, to this end, to encourage the use and reliance on the Bible rather than products about the Bible. So uh, the, the idea is to encourage people just to sit around the table with a Bible, uh, shocking as it may be, and, uh, and simply learn where the books are. You know, have a competition, find out who can find the Genesis first. Um, and then maybe second prize to whoever can find the book of the Revelation second. And uh, so, and then the books, books in the middle. I still have trouble with Zedekiah. A lot of trouble finding that one. You can work out why I have trouble later on. Um, and then, um, but also when I was in Africa, I encouraged people to actually, uh, and they didn't have resources, but they did have different translations of the Bible. Uh, there were um, various language translations and I encouraged them to sit around the table with their different language translations and when they'd read a verse, to read their different verses from different translations and then discuss the nuances that were there in the different translations. Now in doing that, and if you had an AV version, a KVA version, a RSV version, an NIV version, and they all had different little nuances, and uh, then you would actually be doing the work of a lectionary. You would actually be doing exactly the same thing as if somebody sat down at a table with a lect Bible lectionary, a, a, um, um, yeah, uh, not a lectionary, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter, fancy book. Um, and, and they would be comparing the meanings of the words, which is what the different translations do. So you would be able to have a Bible study on that basis by looking at the words and the different changes in the words from different translations. It would be a big help to do so. Um, and one final point, if I can leave it with you, the gospel is contagious when we show evidence of infection. Thank you, Bryce. I was just wondering then how much longer you were going to go on for. I thought we were going to get a second sermon. Actually, you've all heard, um, you've all heard Bryce when he's led the services, uh, and I can assure you his uh, Bible studies are most enjoyable as well. So uh, uh, anyone who would like to uh, partake in a Bible study, of, um, just speak to Bryce, and uh, 
And Ruth, I think you've got one organised. Got to, is that that's a weekly group? Twenty third. Okay, right. Bible studies for serious thinkers. There we go. Anyone who's interested, just speak to Bryce and uh, I'm sure he'll fill you in on the dates and the times and the locations. And anyone with Bryce, there are 52 weeks in a year. <clears throat> Not 40, but you were fairly close because if you were a school teacher, you would only have 40 weeks in a year. <clears throat> oh, g'day, Nick. <laughs> right. Um, enough for the frivolity. Thank you, uh, Andrew and, uh, and the, the Worst family for uh, leading us in the singing today and the music. Uh, Anne and uh, Mark and uh, um, Lexi down the back there. She's been on the sound, so that's, uh, that's good to see. And uh, thank you, Anne, for uh, setting up our um, display here for a Harvest. Thanks. I think that's pretty well all of the notices on the uh, men's um, shed happens on the 26th of February. That's here in, uh, at, at the church complex here. Uh, and you'll hear about Phil Zanker's experiences with the indigenous youth. Um, he's been involved with uh, the indigenous uh, uh, young ones for a good many years. And it's uh, quite interesting to hear what he has, uh, has to say. Uh, of some of his experiences. And with that, the offering uh, as you leave church this morning and morning tea in the um, Rosa Hall room behind us. Thank you.